Okay, so today we're going to discuss all about your reticulocyte count and we're going to discuss later on as well here the RBC count or your cell count. So the first one, we have here your <coughs> reticulocyte count. So as uh, so what we have discussed in your RBC production, so reticulocytes or your granulofilamentous erythrocyte. So this is the, the stage in the RBC series right before your mature RBC. And most likely, we tend to measure the reticulocyte count as our assessment for the effectiveness of your erythropoiesis. How does, uh, how does this reticulocyte count here serve as a degree or as a, use as an assessment for the effective erythropoiesis? So basically, since this one is um, part of our young RBC, so it would signify here the RBC production. So if you have your high reticulocyte count or reticulocytes, that would eventually signify here that your bone marrow is producing new blood cells, new RBC. Uh, you're producing here the new RBC as, again, as a replacement for those RBC which has been lost or damaged, like in the case of your hemolytic reaction where your RBC try to rupture. So therefore, we could assess if your bone marrow here is producing the needed, the necessary compensation if the patient would have hemolytic reaction by the means of your reticulocyte count. So if you have here high reticulocyte count, mean to say your bone marrow is producing new blood cells or new RBC to compensate for what has been lost, for those RBC which has been lost because of your red cell destruction. Okay, so again, reticulocyte would be characterized here by the presence of your cytoplasmic RNA. That's your fine reticulum of the RNA that would allow you to visualize that one by your supravital stain. So we'll discuss the supravital stain later on, although we ha I have already mentioned uh, in our last topic with the supravital stain. Okay, so at the same time, your reticulocytes also contains here the cell organelles, primarily we have your mitochondria and we have also your ribosome. Okay, so... Your reticulocyte, before it become mature RBC, it spent here two days, first in your bone marrow and another one day in your peripheral circulation before eventually become here your mature RBC. Okay, for the normal values of your reticulocyte for the adult one, okay, we have 0.5 to 1.5%. 1 per, 1 and for the newborn, much higher reticulocyte count here, 1.8 to 5.8%. So the newborn would have high reticulocyte count because again, of course, they are still young, they are still uh, infant, so their bone marrow are still producing new blood cells or new RBC. And therefore, expect here that the newborn, the infants would have your high reticulocyte count compared with your, okay, with your adult. So reticulocyte will always be associated with your hemolytic reaction or a bleeding manifestation. So, reticulocyte will also be increased for those having the bleeding manifestation, like if you have the, uh, for example, menstruation among the female patient. So, as a replacement for those RBC which has been lost, the bone marrow will be producing the new RBC and expect to have here a high, high na reticulocyte count among those having menstruation. Okay, we have here the clinical significance of your reticulocyte count. So, Again, reticulocyte count is increased here in the following. Number one, increased erythropoiesis. So, increased RBC production because of the compensation of your bone marrow for any um, hemolytic-related re reaction in your body, which eventually try to rupture the RBC. So, as a compensation, you need to replace those RBC which has already the died or ruptured and that's by producing here the new cells. So therefore, you have your increased reticulocyte count. Another one, you could have also here an increased reticulocyte in decreased RBC synthesis in the case of your anemia. So if the patient would have here anemic, although, okay, so expect here the patient to have an increased retic count. Okay, so this one, this is a true na increased reticulocyte count. This is just parang ano siya, uh, parang uh, pseudo na increase. Okay, because you tend to, to have your increased count because of the 
uh, increasing here the field where you try to count your reticle side count. Okay, basically, uh, to, to explain this one, okay, so when we are doing here the microscopic uh, uh, counting of your reticulocyte count, you are counting the number of the reticulocyte per 1,000 RBC. Okay, times 100, that gives you a percent reticulocyte count. Okay, so all you need to do here is just count 1,000 RBC. And out of that 1,000 RBC, you encountered how many are those reticulocyte count. And multiply by 100, that would give you a percentage of your reticulocyte count. So, if for example, okay, your, this is your microscopic field, RBC, if you try to perform or to make your blood smear, RBC, they tend to uh, overlap one another, they form here a rollo formation. So, pag nag rollo formation ng mga RBC natin, if you try to examine this one under OIO, OIO field is 100x, di ba? Or 1000x total magnification. 100x, okay, or the 1000, this is the, okay, the objective or magnification of your oil immersion objective. And this is the total magnification. So, we obtain, as a review, a total magnification is obtained by the magnification of your objective multiplied by 10x. 10 here is the magnification of your eyepiece or ocular. If you try to multiply 10, which is the magnification of your eyepiece or your ocular of your microscope, with the magnification of your uh, objective, like in the case of your OIO, that's 100x, that gives you here the total magnification. Okay, so for example here, again, if you try to examine your smear under the oil immersion objective, RBC here are overlapping. So once they are overlapping, it will be difficult for you then to count. Hindi mo makakount ito isa-isa. But you need to come up here with 1,000 RBC na makount mo dapat. So with that, we tend to estimate na lang. Paano natin estimate? So you're going to count here 10 OIO field. And we are assuming that in every field of your OIO, there are 100 RBC. So 100 RBC times 10, that gives you 1,000 RBC. That satisfy here already the requirement for you to count the 1,000, to have here the 1,000 RBC, for you to present your reticle site in a percentage. Okay, but what if, for example, if the patient is anemic? So, if the patient is anemic, wala kang makikita masyado na RBC. Tama? So, pag wala kang masyado makikita ng RBC, 10 field is not enough for you to have 1,000 RBC. Kasi wala siya masyado ng RBC, di ba? One field nito, hindi ka maka 100. So, ang mangyari niyan, instead of the 10 field, dadamihan mo ang field in order for you to come up the, with the 1,000 RBC. Ano mangyayari, however, here, if you are increasing the number of the field? If you are increasing the number of the field, you are also increasing the chance of finding or counting the reticulocyte. So, pag dinamihan mo ang field because you wanted to come up to 1,000, dumadami din ang bilang mo ng reticulocyte. And therefore, what you have would be an increase in the reticulocyte. That's more of the false na reticulocyte count just in the case of your anemia. That's why later on, my computation tayo just as, as correction for your reticulocyte count in a case of your anemia. Then we have here your, again, your reticulocyte count could be stained only here by the supravital stain. So that's what we have discussed uh, on our previous topic. Supravital stain are stain wherein this one is be able to be taken up by the cell here even if they are alive the cell. So most likely... Um, the usual staining pattern natin, the cell here, regardless of what type it is, they try to take up the stain or they're being colored here once they are already dead. But in the case of your, uh, some cells here wherein they are, could be stained even if they are still in the living state, and you call that one a source of supervital stain. So, example for the supervital stain here, for reticular side, we are using the new methylene blue. You could also uh, use here your brilliant Crestal, crestal blue. Other cell here that could eventually be also stained here by the supervirus stain, we have your Heinz bodies. 
Heinz bodies is a precipitated globin. Okay, and your hemoglobin H, on the other hand, is made up with your hemoglobin H. This is an abnormal hemoglobin. Okay, so for the case of your Heinz bodies, this is why it's this could be uh, stained here by the supervirus stain in, uh, in the form of your crystal violet with addition of your another stain, acetylphenylhydrazine. Your hemoglobin H, on the other hand, could be stained only here by your brilliant crystal blue. But all the three reticulocytes, Heinz bodies, hemoglobin H, could be stained by our supervital stain. Okay, then we have here routine reticulocyte count. So you could have your microscopic counting of your, um, with your reticulocyte count here or reticulocyte by the use of your smear. Or you could also use here your Miller disc. Your Miller disc here is a calibrated disc. So parang ito siya, parang this, parang square. That is being put on on your eyepiece of your microscope. And eventually, pag, if you try to put that one with your eyepiece of your microscope, what you have here would be the two squares. One, we have here the bigger square designated as letter A. And we have here the smaller square designated as letter B. And the smaller square here occupies actually one ninth of the total size compared with your, um, with your square A, which is the bigger in the square. Okay, in this area, you, you count here your reticulocytes. So, pag nilagay mo ito under the eyepiece of the microscope, okay, kung anong mag-fold dito, so, eyepiece, tapos may slide ka doon with your smear for reticulocyte. Kung anong mag-fold dito na area, okay, so, bibilangin mo kung ilan ang nag-fold dito, ilan ang merong reticulocyte in this area. For the smaller square, you need to count here for the number of the RBC. Okay, later on, uh, we'll have the computation and how to compute for reticular site count with your calibrated Miller disc. So therefore, this one provides you with a standardized area. What, what do you mean by standardized area? So standardized area because, okay, you are expected only to count on the area kung saan naka-designate sa kanya. Hindi ka pwedeng mamili. Okay? On the other hand, you could also use here your reticular site count with your ordinary na microscopic identification, but you need to prepare your smear stained by your supervital stain. Okay, so smear lang siya, and therefore, wala siyang naka-designate na area. Okay, so we have here the reason kung bakit nagkaroon ng uh, difference in account of your reticulocyte. Even you're an expert in the reticulocyte count here or identification reticulocyte. Anyway, reticulocyte, it's not easy to identify under your microscope. So, you need to differentiate ang mga bilog-bilog. Remember that your reticulocytes, okay, if this one is your RBC, RBC dapat walang laman. But if you happen to see here, may mga ganun-ganun, okay, mga reticulum of the RNA, so yun dapat nahanapin mo, that would signify that one as your reticulocyte. So, kindly refer to your ano na lang, PowerPoint, meron na mga picture doon ng mga reticulocytes. Okay, then we have here the reason for the discrepancy number one, inter-observer variation. And speak about the inter-observer variation, so highly dependent on your ability to identify and recognize if this cell is a reticulocyte or hindi. So, baka sa kanya, reticulocyte, so reticulocyte. Okay, then we have here the reason for the discrepancy. So, and speak about the reason for the discrepancy or let. So, that's basically here the reason why sometimes um, it's always identification of the reticulocyte count here is always dependent on who identifies and who made the reticulocyte count. Sometimes uh, someone will just consider this cell here as reticulocyte, others will not consider this one as reticulocyte. So, we have the reason for the discrepancy. Number one, we have your inter-observer variation. So, yun yan. Second one, we have here the size of your sample evaluation. So, the required sample size here should approximately 1,000 RBC. The second one, so 1,000 RBC is being obtained here by having the 10 field, 10 OIO fields. And number three type of the film examined, so you should have here a very good smear. And the fourth one, lack of the standard standardized area. So, when speak about the lack of the standardized area, so if, for example, here we are just having that uh, slide lang, 
So since you'll be counting here the 10 OIO fields, so you have here the choice kung saan ka mag-account ng 10 fields. So baka sometimes piliin mong area doon na okay, na mamimili ka ng field na madaming reticulocyte compared sa mga area na walang reticulocyte. So that's eventually can cause here the error on your counting. So dapat ano siya consecutive, 10 consecutive na OIO field. Unlike in your... Miller this, so generally meron kang uh, designated area where you're going to count your reticular sites. So it's more of the standardized compared with just having your smear for counting here your reticular site in your 10 OIO field. So we have here the, okay, so you can perform this one to increase the accuracy of your identification. So first one, okay, one med deck, so... You just need to prepare here two smear coming from one uh, sample, patient sample, and then make a, um, two smear or two slide. Okay, and then each of that one, you're going to count 500 RBC. And then identify how many of that, how many in this 500 RBC here are reticulous side. On the other slide, ganun din gagawin mo. Then since you'll be counting here, you're supposed to count 1,000 RBC. Okay, all you need to do here is just Add here the number of reticulocytes seen in the first slide and then the number of reticulocytes seen here in your second slide per 500 RBC. Okay, that become your reticulocyte count. The second one, we have your two metek naman. So, each of you, we're going to count here one slide and each, going, each of you are going to count here 500 RBC. Pero it's, this is still one patient pa din. So, from one patient... So, gagawa ka ng dalawang smear. So, ito papakaan mo sa isang medic. Kakaon niya 500 RBC. And how many of out of your 500 RBC are reticulocyte? The same time, the other smear. So, ikaw mag-account. And whatever your account here, i-add mo dun sa reticulocyte counted by another medic. Okay, per 500 RBC. That still gives you 1,000 uh, requirement of your RBC. And the third one, we have here your two medic dalawang slide, each of you are going to count 1,000 RBC. And then, um, count here and identify how many reticulous sites per 1,000 RBC on your slide. And sa kanya naman, and you take an average of that. And therefore, it would increase here the accuracy of your testing process or your counting process. Kasi hindi lang ikaw mag-isa nag-account. Okay, then we have here the procedure when you're doing your uh, routine light microscopic identification of your reticulocyte count. So the first one, so just need to have your, add your blood, that is your EDTA collected blood of the patient with the new methylene blue stain in equal proportion. So like two drops, the requirement here, two to three drops. Like if you have two drops of your blood, then you add two drops of your methylene blue. Or you can have your three drops of the blood. Then you can also have your three drops of your methylene blue. You put that one in your test tube. And after that one, try to mix well to allow here your reticulocyte to take up the stain. Allow it to stand for 5 to 10 minutes at room temperature. And after that one, okay, you try to mix again and try to make a wedge na smear. So, kukuha ka dun sa test tube of your mixture of your stain and your blood. Kuha ka ng drop, lalagay sa smear, and then make a smear, wedge smear. Air dry, and eventually after that one, try to identify that one under the microscope. So we have here some consideration with the reticulocyte count preparation or identification. The first one, okay, we have here drying artifacts here in your smear could be confused here with your reticulocytes. Most likely, pag mga artifacts... They are mga cells or mga structure which are highly refractile. So under the microscope, if you try to adjust your fine adjustment, those artifacts would be refractile. So para siyang umiilaw. But your reticulocyte is not refractile. So that will help you identify this one is reticulocyte, this one is an artifact because of that. Okay, another one, you need to mix your blood um, thoroughly here when you are... Uh, before you are preparing, well, before you get your sample from your ETA collected blood. Because basically, your reticulocyte here found on the upper portion of your mature RBC in your blood because your reticulocyte would have a 
a lower specific gravity compared with your mature RBC. So therefore, para makuha more reticulocytes in your blood sample here, so you need to mix it thoroughly. Okay, another one, so you need also to adjust here for the volume of the blood with your anticoagulant ratio in the case of your anemic patient and in the case of your polycytemic or so polycy polycytemia, polycytemia vera na patient. Pag anemic ang patient, so konti lang blood niya. Okay, so all you need to do here is instead of equal volume, so instead of two drops, two drops, so dadamihan mo ang blood because anemic ang patient. Pag uh, sobrang lapot ng dugo ng patient, gagawin mo ay babawasan mo ang volume ng blood compare with the volume of your new methylene blue. Another one, we have here also different cells here that could be mistaken as your reticulocytes. The first one, we have your Heinz bodies. Okay, the Heinz bodies is just a precipitated globin structure. It's a precipitated globin or hemoglobin. Okay, that's in the case of your problem with your hexose monophosphate chain pathway with your absence of your glutathione synthase the enzyme. But in the case of your Heinz bodies, ang difference niya with your reticulocyte, your Heinz bodies is usually found here at the periphery or at the edge of your RV. So, dito siya sa gilid. Hindi siya makikita sa gitna. Another structure that could be mistaken here as your reticulocyte, we have your Howell jelly bodies. Okay, Howell jelly bodies is considered here as the fragments of your DNA in the case of your defective DNA synthesis. Okay, uh, Howell jelly bodies could be differentiated here with your Articular side because your Howell jelly body is usually in single, singular. Mean to say, mag-isa lang siya. Dito makikita, hindi siya madami. Okay, another one, we have your Pappenheimer bodies. Pappenheimer bodies, on the other hand, so this is um your iron granules. And remember that reticular side is not your iron granules. So, Pappenheimer bodies here, if you are suspecting for the presence of that, then stain mo siya ng Prussian blue stain. Prussian blue stain is a specific stain for your iron. So, kung mag-positive sa Prussian blue, mean to say that one is your Pappenheimer bodies. Pag nag-negative sa Prussian blue, then that's your reticulocyte. If you're really in confused between your structure as reticulocyte or Pappenheimer bodies. Okay, then after you have already your smear prepared here with your... Uh, light microscopy, so all you need to do here is just perform the retic count. Again, you are instructed here to count here uh, reticulocyte in 10 OI of field. Then after that one, you try to total the number of reticulocytes seen in the entire 10 OI of field. That becomes your number of reticulocytes or total number of reticulocytes seen in your 10 OIO. Total number divided by 1000 RBC times 100 that gives you here the percentage of reticulocytes. On the other hand, we have your calibrated Miller disc. Again, this is calibrated Miller disc here that's being inserted on the eyepiece or the ocular of your microscope. Again, we have your two squares. Again, we have the bigger square. This again is letter A. Dito ka magka-count ng reticulocyte. Wala kang pakialam sa mature na RBC. With square B, the smaller square here, you're going to count here the number of RBC na makikita dito sa square na to, including your reticulocyte. Okay, for our formula for the computation, so we have your total number of reticulocyte na makita mo sa square A, multiply by 100. Over here, the total number of the RBC seen in the square B, including your reticulocyte, multiply by 9. So, we have this one, the College, Amer the College of American Pathologists here requires you na makakita lang ng 112 na RBC. 112 is equivalent to 1,008 okay, na RBC here. Okay, 112, for example, 112 nakita mo dito, multiply by 9, that gives you 1,008. That's satisfy already here the 1,000 RBC na requirements. Okay, so that's your calibrated Miller disc that provides you here with a standardized area for counting your reticulocyte.